future in Northern Ireland goes. Well, the other parties will say that the DUP don't speak for the majority of people in Northern Ireland. They'll go back to the 2016 referendum and remind people that 56% of people here. So the DUP was alone amongst the major Northern Ireland parties in wanting Brexit hmm. to happen. Now, that so was Ian, blue tip, cold tip, party, great tip, crested tip in 20 seconds. <laughs> All in one frame. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Wild Vlogs, where we'll talk about all things wildlife and all things filmmaking. We're going to dive straight in this week, but before we do, I'm just going to give you the quick lowdown on the equipment I use. I use a Panasonic GH5, filming in 4K at 60 frames a second. I use a Panasonic Lumix FZ82, filming in 4K at 30 frames a second, the same as my DJI Mavic, and both of those frame rates I'll reduce in post to 24 frames a second. But this week, we're heading back to Speyside. In the foothills of the Cairngorms, and the incredible Abernethy Forest Reserve. Abernethy in autumn has an incredible ethereal stillness that seems to amplify the brief blasts of life, whether near or far, from somewhere under its enormous evergreen canopy. Mayflies still dancing in sunbeams in an almost obscene celebration of life's end. there are those that are keen to profit from it. This also one of the few places where Golden Eye are seen as resident. This Scando Forest Hans Christian Andersen ambience is seemingly celebrated by some, but looking closely under a few stands of birch, you will find the genuine article. Flyer Garrick bursting into life. The golden sprays of birch decorate both canopy and forest floor, including the high tops of a mature wood ant's nest. There's now a slow autumnal dynamic to the colony. It sights itself here amongst the pine because it milks the resin and uses it as an antibacterial agent underneath the nest.
to the base, we find the flailing death rows of a violet ground beetle, casting an iridescent quality right to the end. Life in this place sits right on the extremes, with a 300-year-old granny pine casting itself wide and providing a perch to a very special resident. The lure of this almost endemic bird will test the patience of many. Others, like the coltit, are more gregarious but it's the fleeting glimpse of a cresty that keeps the spirits high. A female great spotted woodpecker takes ingenuity to new heights, chiseling a channel into a trunk's pith to form a pinecone vice. This is behaviour I'd heard of, but I'd never ever witnessed before. Faded male chaffinches, now not looking so proud. And seemingly wary of all the exposure. but it's the fleeting cresty that holds the fort. It would seem silly not to try and create a variety of lures similar to those found in the forest, but back at the lodge, and possibly to replenish old ones though I knew that one resident was already waiting in the wings. Whether Beatrix Potter's Squirrel Nutkins or Tufty of the Road Safety Campaign, it's such a sad loss to most of the UK that the Red Squirrel has now been absent, for some coming up to a hundred years. There is some hope though, as the advance of the pine martin continues, our reds will return whilst the greys will flee in the shadows of their new nemesis. expect a visit from a crested tit. Well on one rainy morning I did. There's a thrill to this bird that stems from a childhood poring over images of all the creatures from far distant lands. And now, here I sit, coffee in hand, whilst it graces my presence from just a few yards away. Magical.
When the day to leave our Forest Lodge home arrives, I know that there's one more stop to make with the hope of filming my first mountain hare in over 10 years. A Glen Shee skiing centre, barren of snow, but full of hope. And with a modicum of effort and slightly throbbing calves, I find an altitude where resides the red grouse and the blue hare. Though now it's a chocolate box of variety. So my autumn Scottish adventure ends with us sitting peacefully together and a thought that the ptarmigan will have to wait till next year. Simply love Scotland. It's one of those places just as soon as I'm back, all I want to do is return. Well done to Monix Mordors for answering last week's teaser correctly. That's right, Manx Shearwater on leaving Skemmer Island, whether fledging or finishing breeding season, will head across the Atlantic to the continent of South America. They pretty much spend all their time, all our winter season, on the coast of Brazil. An amazing migration. This week's teaser is coming up in the next time clip. Again, it's a chick, but I think all the clues are there. I think this is a relatively easy one for you. Answers, please, in the comments below. But for this week, guys, all it leaves me to say is looking forward to Vlog 8 and goodbye.